Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome back. I'm the Backcountry Prepper, and uh, we're here in the greenhouse. Another Nonsanto greenhouse update. Uh, things are going very well. Uh, I just did a harvest. Let me show you what we got. See if we can get the sun there. A bunch of pickles, cucumbers, zucchini, and yes, finally, our first broccoli. Oh, pretty cool. I'm excited about that. Uh, I got that monster uh, cucumber over there. I uh, got, it looks like five or six zucchinis, a bunch of cucumbers, and another bunch of pickles. Uh, needless to say, we're pretty overwhelmed with pickles right now. Also, for dinner tonight, we got a bunch of these bush beans. Uh, this takes about, it takes about a week and a half to grow this much at the current rate. So there's probably a good one or two pounds right here. And uh, I love these things. Fry them up with some homegrown bacon. Good, good, good. So let me do a panoramic shot uh, here. Got the beans here. Bunch of romaine lettuce. Um, this is one mistake I'm probably not going to make again. Putting uh, cantaloupe and uh, same thing for watermelon. I don't think I want to grow that inside. It just takes up too much and we still haven't gotten any fruit on it. It's just... It's taking too much space for what it's worth, I think. Um, you can see we took the strawberry uh, rain gutter things off for down here. And uh, I think I'm going to get bigger. I'm probably going to have them made uh, at a plenum shop. Just uh, sheet metal boxes uh, that are wider and deeper than those rain gutters. So I could grow my herbs up on the wall. Right now the herbs are right there. I mean, it's fine, but they don't take up much space. And... Uh, I'm going to just put them in the gutters and the boxes that I'll have made and use the space for something else. Onions are just about ready. Uh, the research that I've done, if you want to know when your onions are ready, the first thing they do is they start to fall over like this. And also the, the tips uh, begin to get brown. The tips of the onions start to get brown. So I still got a while to go on here. When I harvest these, I'll probably uh, record it and put it here on YouTube so you can see uh, but these onions here, these ones have already fallen over. Once they start falling over, you can actually help them. But I'm going to just let these go for a few more weeks. And then uh, once I'm ready to pull them out, I'll show you guys. Uh, spinach is doing really well. Uh, we've been feeding a lot of that to the, the pig that we're finishing off. Uh, just because we have so much of it. And uh, I went ahead, and I know I'm going to get some uh, slack for this, but I, go, I went ahead and I planted my strawberries right here uh, in this patch where the lettuce used to be and uh, some more spinach used to be so I put my strawberries there one of them's already coming up uh, let me see if I can find it here yeah here we go there's a little guy so strawberries you get in these little root balls called ribosomes and uh, you just plant those a couple inches deep and water them and they come back so also the uh, asparagus I had going in the uh, rain gutters that were here, I actually planted, replanted right here in this little corner just to see if it'll come back. So we'll see here in a few weeks. But let me show you guys some of the growth. Uh, again, the watermelons, I probably won't do these again here, not inside at least. Um, you can see all the collards, uh, all the cabbage is doing really well. You can see the size of the head, really, really nice tight head. Got another one over there. And then the uh, purple cabbage is starting to head up as well. Uh, Brussels sprouts over there and uh, here's one broccoli I'm leaving this one because it's still pretty small this is the one that I just cut and that I just showed you now supposedly these come back and I'm hoping they come back once you cut the flower off it'll reflower again um, fruit trees the dwarf fruit trees this is the lemon this is the orange and that's the lime pretty cool check this out look at that got a little orange going in there not bad for 4,000 feet above uh, sea level. Being able to grow citrus here is pretty cool. Um, as you can see, I harvested all the potatoes out of one bag of potatoes that you buy from the store to plant. Uh, we got probably about 40, 40 good red potatoes. So that turned out well. See here, got some more romaine coming up. And the corn, yep, all the way to the ceiling, hitting the ceiling and curling back down. Uh, like I said in my last video, I'm probably not going to grow corn in here either. This is all uh, 
education for me. I've never done anything like this to this extent. But you can see the years of the corn, they're just about ready. I'm not sure how to tell when they are ready. What I did is just opened up this end a little bit, kind of looked at the kernels and then I pushed it back together. And uh, it doesn't look ready yet, it still looks a little premature. So walking on down, <laughs> the artichoke plants are getting about three feet tall now. I'm hoping those uh, start to flower here pretty soon. But check this out, so happy. Our first tomatoes are coming out. These are beef steaks. Uh, we got quite a few of them around here and there. So tomatoes is one of my all-time favorite things in the world. So I'm pretty excited about this jungle. Here's another one here. And I'm sure there's a bunch that we haven't seen that are hidden. Our basil, we've been continually chopping back. Once it starts to flower, we chop it back. Um, we can't eat it fast enough. I think I planted too many. Probably do fine with just one plant. We have three. So let me show you the size of the tomato hedge here. Uh, they're about six feet tall. They go all the way to the roof. And they're just, they're just loving it in here. They love the soil. They love the watering. Uh, we're on automatic water here, so it comes on at the same time for the same duration every day. We get plenty of water, plenty of sun, plenty of good soil. And uh, I guess you could say that's the best thing for plants, right? So pickles and cucumbers, we've been harvesting pretty much daily. Glad the kids love the cucumbers because we're overwhelmed with them. Pepper plants, doing pretty awesome. Um, I took these stakes and I put string across just because I know once these get peppers on it, they're going to be loaded down and I don't want them to fall over or anything. So I kind of just made a, a mismatch of uh, string here with uh, little rods that are strapped to the frame of the building. So pretty strong, be able to hold all this up. Got a lot of pepper, probably have 15 or so different pepper plants. I love peppers, spicy, that's my thing. Uh, it's good to go. So anyways, I went ahead, I've, there's been a lot of changes here, this being one of them. Uh, I went ahead and I planted zucchini over here just because the plant over there, I'll show you in a second, is just getting so thick. So thick with uh, leaves that it's just taking up too much space. So going down here in this spot, remember this is where the carrots were. So I still have carrots, like little carrot uh, seedlings coming up. But I planted yellow squash here. Uh, I don't know if that's it, but yellow squash here and then eggplant. I transplanted this one over here. It was funny because I could have swore I planted two of these, but I only found one. So let me show you what's going on. Here's the celery. Celery's doing really good. Probably a couple weeks will be ready. Um, I did some more Brussels sprouts here. Love Brussels sprouts. Small batch of radishes. See, I learned from the first time. Don't grow too much. And then carrots. Here is our tomatillo plants for making chili verde. And here's a zucchini. I harvested probably five or six of them today. But as you can tell as I pound back, it's just it's just it's too big. It's uh kind of overgrowing everything here. So what I did is I pulled out the yellow squash that was here. Just pulled it out. It wasn't producing, it hasn't produced anything in a few weeks. So I decided to pull it out to give the zucchini more space and uh, lo and behold I did plant two yellow squash plants and there's the proof. So it was just hiding and this eggplant was hiding behind the uh, yellow squash. So now I got this eggplant over here. I don't know how well it's going to do. I'll probably, once my new zucchini plants start getting bigger, I'll probably rip this one out and give room to the eggplant. Here's the pinto bean bush. We've done two harvests already on this. Uh, it looks like uh, my son missed a few. He's going to have to get back in here. Uh, really cool. Once they get probably about the size of your finger, a little bit bigger, uh, pick them off, put them in a cookie, cookie sheet, and set it outside in the sun. Let it dry out for a few days. And then uh, just crack them open and pinto beans comes out. So that's about it. Um, 
just wanted to give you guys an update on how everything's growing. Uh, pretty good. <laughs> We've been, we eat off this every single day. Uh, this is uh, definitely supplemented our food budget extremely well. Um, anything you can do, like I say in all the Monsanto videos, anything you can do to grow whatever you can now, because there will come a time where the store shelves will be empty. It's a matter of time. It's, it's not if it happens, it's when it happens. So grow whatever you can. Just, just for the simple fact, you know, prepping aside and uh, SHTF aside, the food is much better, it's much more healthy, and in the long run, it's more cost effective. What kind of got me into thinking about doing this greenhouse and our livestock and everything was uh, one day we went to the store uh, grocery shopping, and uh, upon coming home, I went down the receipt with a highlighter, and I highlighted everything on the receipt that I thought I could produce here at my ranch, and it ended up being 80% for what we bought I could produce here at the ranch uh, up to 80% worth. So I only have, should only have to buy 20% if I'm doing it myself. And uh, that's a pretty, really, really close to the uh, actual numbers. I spend about 80% less at the store now. Uh, so our food bill, as far as the store has gone down, as far as the livestock, since uh, we're in an area that does not provide grazing, uh, it, it is expensive to feed the livestock. Um, it's actually more expensive to do it the way I'm doing it. However, if you think about me having organic meat, if you had to go to the store to buy organic meat, uh, thinking of it in that sense, it's actually cheaper. So it's way better. It's fresher. I know the animals are happy and they're well taken care of. And then as far as the greenhouse, um, not one pesticide has ever been sprayed in here. And uh, we don't have any insect problems. We do have a lot of insects, uh, but... Organic vegetable gardens require uh, biodiversity when it comes to uh, insects like that. They, they uh, work the soil and, and uh, keep everything healthy just as if it was outside. So anyways, like you can see, a lot of growth, um, a lot of harvesting. I haven't been in here in about two days, so this is probably about two, three days worth. So a lot of food, lots of food. And at the end of every Monsanto video, you know, I always try to encourage everybody to do something, anything they can to supplement their food, uh, their availability to food, not having to rely on a Monsanto store, uh, big conglomerates that don't care about your health. They only care about you buying their products. So give Monsanto your finger and grow it yourself. It's easy. It's enjoyable. The food, it tastes way better. You feel good about feeding it to your children, knowing that it's not covered in pesticides or ge genetically modified. Um, I know the fruit trees are genetically modified, they're dwarf. But uh didn't have much of a choice of that. If I wanted citrus in here, if I would have grown a regular tree, it would have went up through the roof. So uh, just being honest, got to keep me honest. But anyways, uh, here it is. Soil is really good. Uh, my neighbor down the street has got his greenhouse up and going. Uh, I got him some of the soil out of my compost pile, and his stuff has just taken off. Uh, his greenhouse isn't as big as this one, but uh, he doesn't have as big a family, so he will be uh, he will be inundated with food here shortly as well, uh, just like we are. So here it is, non Santo, non Santo greenhouse, growing what we eat every single day love it anyways i'm the backcountry prepper everyone if you like this channel please give it a thumbs up please subscribe and please share it to your friends if you have any questions about the greenhouse about the plants about our soil about what we're growing um how the greenhouse was built the irrigation system the misting system the lighting system if you have any questions on anything give me a shout and i'll do my best to answer anyways i'm the backcountry prepper everyone prep and thrive